As we're getting closer and closer to me putting in my 2024 season predictions, things like the individual awards, the brand loads, the rising stars, etc., etc. Norm Smith medal, maybe, if we go down that path. The also closer that we get to doing the team awards, things like top eights, my premiership contenders, etc., etc. And I thought I would touch on the team that I think I've spoken about and maybe dissected the least going into this preseason, that being St. Kilda, because the Saints are the only team in the comp, I think, where I can look at everything good and everything potentially bad and agree with both almost simultaneously. So let's put all of those things into the melting pot and talk about the Saints in 2024. Let's go. So let's start with the good. Now, last year when I was doing team dissections, I remembered going to the stats a lot and going, this is what a team does well, this is what they don't do well. And in sort of reflecting on those kinds of things, I noticed that the stats that I love the most aren't particular parts of the ground. It's differentials. You could be really good at one area of the ground, but if you're also conceding the same stat to the opposition, are you really that good at it when you look at both sides of the ball? Now, the good news for the Saints is that they are really good in some particular areas. In fact, they were fifth last year in the competition for differentials in meters gained, ground and contested ball, as well as center clearances. They were fifth in all those stats, which is really good. They played finals last year. Excellent. They should have beaten the Giants going into that game, but they got soundly beaten by a team that eventually was one point off a grand final. I don't think that loss has aged anywhere near as badly as potentially some people think it has. I like the Saints more than even Saints fans think I do, but I definitely think the negatives towards the Saints are potentially bigger than Saints fans give maybe props, credit, whatever way that you want to look at it. But let's start with the obvious ones, which is injuries. They were just bent over the proverbial when it came to injuries last year. Not an excuse, but it is a reason. Those two statements can coexist. It's not an excuse for how they played, but it is a reason that maybe they didn't go further. Now, natural improvement and hopefully a healthier list is going to see one of two things happen. The Saints take the next step, therefore win a final, maybe even two, be a surprise prelim team, maybe, or they'll regress, not make finals, yada, yada, yada. Almost the worst thing that St. Kilda can do this year. And yes, you might say, well, bottom four would be pretty bad. Okay, yes, I'll concede. But in terms of what we think natural development would be, the worst thing that can happen to the Saints this year is that they get healthier, but don't rise up the ladder. If they're relatively healthy for the majority of the season, finish sixth or seventh and lose an elimination final, that's not good. They've got reasons this year. Now, how they're going to overcome this, I'm going to talk about in just a second. But when you've got a defensive coach, and they defended really well last year, the Saints. Don't get me wrong. Don't hate. I'm not hating on the Saints. Don't hate on me for saying this. They defended beautifully. But, 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 at some point, they are going to have to sacrifice some defense in order to score. St. Kilda scored more than Hawthorne, West Coast, and North last year. And you're thinking, yeah. Everyone else did too. But St. Kilda didn't outscore anyone else. And that's a problem. That is a huge problem when it comes to a full season of sample size. And the reason why they were so good at center clearance is because one-on-one, -on -one, they were excellent around the ball. Jack Steele had a poor year, but was still a part of that midfield group. We saw more of Win Hager in there. We saw more of Owens in there, albeit in the ruck. But he still had some CBAs while Marshall was there. Seb Ross was okay, but he's going to be a part of what I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. But the man who really stood up was Brad Crouch, who had a career best year, in my opinion, and looked really, really good. And they're going to have to continually rotate guys through there. Been seeing a bit of Liam Henry as an inside mid, which doesn't excite me too much, I'm not going to lie. But Mateus Filippo is going to be able to work in there nicely, and everyone knows how big of a fan I am of the man known as MP, ran here at Daz HQ. Not all the nicknames are that advanced, guys. Don't take it too seriously. And advanced was supposed to be that word in English. But they're definitely going to need to get better in that department around the ground. And the big problem was is that they're not sending enough bodies to a stoppage around the ground in order to try to take territory. 
what they tried to do is to get one or two numbers behind the ball, turn the ball over from the opposition, and then go. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Is it going to work better that with a healthier Max King, hopefully a healthier Tim Membry? Sure, of course. You would hope so. I don't think Max King has hit his peak nowhere near it, and I don't think Tim Membry is a scrub. So you'd think that would work well. But just thinking what we did was right, and all we need to do to get healthier and all of our problems are solved is not going to be the way that St. Kilda are going to become a contender. They are going to need to be willing to concede some extra. Not a whole lot, but they are going to need to gamble at stoppage to win the ball and get it forward. Dan Butler and Jack Higgins are going to thrive with speed on the ball. And speed on the ball is going to come with speed in territory. Starting on the half back line, He's not going to be to the benefit of Dan Butler, Jack Higgins, and these guys up forward. Hopefully, we get to see more of Ollie Hotton. Hopefully, we get to see some Lance Collard this year. It's not going to be to the benefit of those guys. Not all the time. Sometimes, yes, you've got to score in multiple different ways. But if you're not winning the stoppage clearance in big games, you are going to be in trouble. And that's where they got themselves into trouble. They've got Jack Sinclair. They've got Naziah Wanganine Miller. They've got Brad Hill. Guys, get the ball to the outside and go, go, go. Now, here's the good news for St. Kilda fans before you think I'm just shitting on you. That is what track watchers and media people are saying is happening at the Saints, which is good, which is why I am quite optimistic. And I also think the underrated part is St. Kilda have one of the best under-21 cores in the competition. Now, this does also rely to a problem that I have with the Saints, but again, we're sticking positives here. If they can get a bit more speed on the ball at stoppage, they're going to be an ultra-dangerous team to watch. I still think they are a forward short. I think they're a tall forward short, to be honest. But working with what they've got, their list of players under 21 looks really exciting, and it reads like this. I'm just reading it off my laptop here, so work with me. Max Heath, Naziah Wanganine Miller, Marcus Winhager, Mitch Owens, Anthony Caminiti, Isaac Keeler, James Van Ness, uh, Angus McLennan, Ollie Hotton, Matthias Filippo, Ari Schoenmaker, Lance Collard, Hugh Garcia, Darcy Wilson. So pumped to see him. Uh, Angus Hasty and Liam O'Connell. Now, yes, we haven't seen a lot of those guys yet, but coming in and where they were drafted look really, 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 really bloody good. That is a list to get really excited about. And even if you go to the guys that are 25 or below or 24 and below, uh, let's get that up as quickly as we can. So we've got Matt Allison. I haven't seen a whole lot of Matt. But Liam Henry, they've just gotten. Ryan Burns, who's a guy they'll be wanting to get some improvement into. Cooper Sherman, or Sharman, I should say, sorry, who's a good player. Max King, we know what Max can do. Liam Stocker, who was really good last year. They just got Paddy Dow from the Blues. They'll be hoping for a career best year from him. And then you've got Hunter Clark, Jack Higgins, uh, Ben Patton, who's only 25. Holy smokes. Uh, Josh Battle, who I'm a big fan of. And that is a really good list of 25 and below. That's the positive. Here's the negative. A lot of the guys that I've got doubts over are older than that. How much is a Seb Ross going to bring to a contending team? And it's not like you can drop him. You still need that level of experience. How does Brad Crouch respond after a career best year? Will Jack Steele get back to his best? I think Rowan Marshall will be the All-Australian Ruckman, but he's still got to be able to do it and be up there in that upper echelon. What is Tim Membry going to be able to bring? Dan Butler are guys that we've already spoken about. If you have doubts over the Saints, you're right. If you're optimistic about the Saints, you're right. So will they be a premiership contender, in my opinion? No. Do I think they're going to fall as far as other people do? No, I really don't. What I am excited for when it comes to St. Kilda fans, though, is to be able to see that next stage of development. Now, Max King could kick two goals seven in a game and lose you one. That's fine. He's going to kick seven in another game and help you beat a contender at some point. But Ross's defensive consistency, in my opinion, needs to just slightly falter in order to gamble on scoring more. Sure, you didn't concede a lot of scores either. But when it came down to it, in a one-off elimination game, St. Kilda did not have the offensive firepower to roll with the Giants. Injuries or not, they just didn't. And if they're going to take the next step, the defense has got to be still good. But sometimes you're going to have to concede 90 points in the game in order to try to kick 100. 
that's the way it goes. So what do you guys think? How far can St. Kilda go? I think at this point in time, I've got them eighth on my ladder, but I definitely think they're going to be around that mark. I could see them finishing sixth. I honestly can't see them finishing anywhere lower than like 11th. I just don't think that's going to happen. So on the David King to Kane Corn spectrum of St. Kilda optimism, I feel like I'm more towards Kingy at this point in time. But what do you guys think? I would love to know. Comment below. Let me know. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to join the Daz Talks Footy family, which so many of you have, which is extraordinary after the Hawthorne video. But you can check out my most recent video by clicking on my channel name. Have a fantastic few days, and I'll see you on Thursday.